Today we are going to learn about bond types and how to predict bond types bet uh, between atoms. And we're going to need to understand something about electronegativity before we do that. Electronegativity is the measure of the pole of an atom on a shared pair of electrons. So there's a bond between two atoms and in that bond there is a shared pair in the middle and that uh, each atom is going to pull on that shared pair and how hard you're pulling is going to uh, determine uh, your, or that's what your electronegativity is. And so in general the trend is <coughs> pretty uh, easy to remember. In general electronegativity gets bigger as you go to the right. Uh, Fluorine is going to pull on an electron uh, uh, a lot more than calcium would, which makes sense because fluorine is so close to satisfying the octet rule and the calcium wants to get rid of electrons. Um, and because of the shielding effect again, uh, the electronegativity gets smaller as you go down, uh, a, down a group. So that is the trend in electronegativity. Now the exceptions to the trend are the noble gases. Noble gases kind of, uh, it's not, ap not applicable to them because they in general don't bond, and so if you don't bond, you can't measure how much you're pulling on a shared pair because you're not sharing. And so uh, it's kind of a meaningless question to ask what the electronegativity of a noble gas is in general, although there are uh, examples of times when they can bond, that's pretty rare. So uh, just to kind of illustrate the point, um, you know, if you want to pause screen cap and print that out, you can. There's one in your book as well somewhere. I don't really care which page. If I said which page is on and got a new book, it would be kind of a useless video, wouldn't it? So here's an example. Uh, you can actually assign values, and as you see, hydrogen here is 2.2, uh, <coughs> um, and then they get smaller as you go down. Francium is all the way down to 0.7. As you go uh, left to right across, you can see that the uh, the numbers in general tend to go up. There are some exceptions where they might dip here and there, but in general they go up as you go across. Um, you'll see here a couple of examples of noble gases that do have values for electronegativity because they were able to get them to bond under extreme conditions, and uh, you can see that those have rather large electronegativity values as you would expect. And so if you ever want to uh, look up an electronegativity value uh, you can do that, but in general it suffices to know that it gets bigger over here for non-metals and smaller over here for metals, and <coughs> smaller as you go down, bigger as you go up. So now that we know that, we can kind of look and we can um, say, you know, obviously fluorine is going to have a higher electronegativity value than gallium, and gallium is going to be higher than scandium, and cesium is going to be higher than lithium, and, or lower than lithium, I should have said. Um, and, and so that's the idea. So what are we going to do with this? Who cares? Well, what we're going to do with this is we're going to look at different kinds of bonds. So there are three types of bonds that we can uh, illustrate with these electronegativity values. First of all, let's take uh, uh, <coughs> a kind of bond where uh, maybe it's between uh, chlorine and chlorine. So chlorine is over on one side of the bond and uh, we're actually going to use a uh, we're going to use an analogy here of a tug of war. So here are two chlorine atoms, and they are pulling on this tug of war rope. And I don't know how familiar you are with tug of war, but in tug of war, uh, there is a little flag. If you're doing it right, there's a little flag in the middle, and there's uh, a little line over here and a little line over here, and each one's going to try to pull that flag over across the line. If you pull the f flag across your your uh, your line then you've won. And, um, <coughs> excuse me, if we look at and predict, try to predict who's going to win this fight between chlorine and chlorine, it's fairly obvious who's going to win. The answer is neither, because they're both chlorine. Chlorine is going to not pull any harder than chlorine, and that flag is going to stay right there in the center. There's no movement. Now in our analogy here, the flag represents the lone, or the bonded pair. That's the pair of electrons is like the flag. And so in the uh, in this first case they, there is no movement of the flag, it's right there in the center. This is what we would call a 
nonpolar covalent bond. Nonpolar covalent bond. Because the uh, two atoms are uh, sharing either equally or very close to equally sharing those electrons. Now let's imagine a different scenario. Let's say that sulfur is in a tug of war with fluorine. <coughs> fluorine, fluorine. Let's go fluorine. There we go. Now if we go back, uh, we want to predict what's going to happen here. Look over here at our periodic table. Sulfur is right there. Fluorine is right there. Fluorine up and to the right of sulfur. And so it is going to pull harder. It's both, uh, it's going to pull harder on that shared pair because it's higher up. So it's higher electronegativity because it's further up and it's also further to the right. So fluorine is going to win. But if you'll notice, these aren't real different. Sulfur does have an electronegativity. It does gonna, it is going to pull somewhat. Uh, if we go back to our little uh, electronegativity chart, uh, from <coughs> we can see fluorine has a, a value. Um, sorry, I'm having trouble with the lighting here. Uh, reading that it looks like uh, it's like three and a half or so, and uh, sulfur is. 2.6 and so three and a half, two point six, those are uh not ridiculously different. They're only about one apart. Whereas if fluorine were pulling against, say, lithium over here, lithium has a 0.58, if I'm reading that correctly, uh value, and so it's going to that can't be right. Probably 0.98. Really need to turn off. Oh there we go. Yeah, lithium is 0.98. And uh so uh, that would be a difference of three. So a difference of three is huge compared to just a difference of one. So this is a slight difference. Fluorine and sulfur, they're different, but it's a, it's a relatively small difference. They're kind of close together on the periodic table. If we look at them, they're, they're right there together. And so fluorine is going to <coughs> pull harder than sulfur, but only by a little bit. And so that flag, it's going to come over towards fluorine, but he's not going to pull it across the line. He's not going to take it. Rather than the flag being right there in the center as it was up here in the nonpolar covalent bond, the flag is going to be towards fluorine but not cross the line. And so they're sharing again, but they're not sharing equally. This time the fluorine is winning, but it hasn't won. It's ahead, but it hasn't won. It's it's like a, it's four to three in the eighth inning. It's, the game's not over yet. And so in this case, we have a name for that. So this guy is going to uh, it's going to be called a polar covalent bond because they're still sharing. He has not taken the electron away. He's just pulled it towards himself a little bit. So that's the difference between polar where, yeah, it's towards you, or it's nonpolar where it's right there in the middle. But they're both covalent because no one has actually taken an electron away yet. And so our final example, which you can probably predict what's going to happen here, if you're paying close attention, let's take something like uh, sodium <coughs> and uh, fluorine. Uh, sodium, uh, let's put this little flag here in the middle again. And sodium, if we go back and look at the periodic table, sodium's way over here. Fluorine's way over here. Sodium is going to have a much, much smaller electronegativity than fluorine. If we like, we can actually look at the numbers again. And uh, the sodium's number is going to be tiny. It's going to have a number of electronegativity value of 0.93 as opposed to fluorine's 3.98. That's a difference of greater than 3. That's a huge difference. And so um, what's going to happen here? Well, fluorine's going to beat up sodium, take his lunch money, take his electrons and boom fluorine wins fluorine has taken he's won the game he's taken that away from the sodium sodium has lost the electron so sodium now has a positive charge these there's no charge here there's just a slight separation of of where the electrons are it's not like one has actually taken it away so fluorine becomes minus this is what happens in an ionic bond and so, how do you predict these? Well, it's pretty simple. 
if you have two non-metals, two things over here, but they're not the same element, that's going to be polar. If you have one thing on this side and one thing on this side, it's going to be ionic. A metal and a non-metal, it's going to be ionic. But if you have two of exactly the same element, fluorine with fluorine, chlorine with chlorine, oxygen with oxygen, those are going to be nonpolar. Nonpolars are pretty rare. Uh, nonpolar covalent. Um, and so polars and nonpolars are both covalent again. And so those are the basic breakdowns of the different ways. Uh, I won't ask a lot of uh, tricky ones where they're kind of, uh, you know, I won't ask about like maybe phosphorus with nickel. It's like, oh, are those far enough apart to be ionic? I, I just want you to get the basic difference between these things. <coughs> and let's close the ink layer so that we can 